was a landmark victory. The People's Democratic Party, or HDP, swept into Parliament in 2015 on a wave of optimism and defiance, issuing a challenge to Turkey's ruling Justice and Development Party from the very beginning. There is no room now for you to look down on us from the balcony and shake fingers at us in this country. Now you will be speaking to us on the same level. Get used to it. Those days are over. Kurdish political parties had for decades been shut down or brought before the Constitutional Court of Turkey to be banned. All had links with the PKK, a separatist group designated as a terror organization by Turkey, the US, and the EU. But after the height of that conflict in the 1990s, Turkey's political environment opened up during Recep Tayyip Erdogan's 11-year tenure as prime minister. Election materials, for instance, were allowed to be delivered in languages other than Turkish. Such reforms set the stage for the rise of the HDP. It became the first predominantly pro-Kurdish movement to enter parliament as a political party, rather than through independent candidates, a method used to get over Turkey's 10% electoral threshold. But ultimately, the HDP's ascent was short-lived. Within weeks of its entrance to parliament, the PKK broke the two and a half year long ceasefire and violence escalated. What would follow would be a confluence of events that would radically alter Turkey's political environment. HDP politicians have publicly acknowledged their links to militant organizations in the region. And they have also alluded to the pressure of operating politically in parts of the country where the PKK exerts considerable power. After the failed coup attempt last July, HDP members were arrested and accused of having ties to the PKK. They included the co-chairs Salatin Dermatas and Figen Yüksekta. Yüksekta has since been stripped of her title. Some Kurds say the HDP is being unfairly targeted, and if it were the political wing of the PKK, it would never have been elected, because the PKK is deeply unpopular with most Kurds. It's a political decision. It can't be more than that. If the leader of the party has 6 million votes, and if 13 MPs of this party are in parliament, it's nothing but a political arrest. The HDP is not working for the PKK. I don't believe that. The HDP is against violent acts, both by the PKK and Turks. But Mehmet Amin Akinji, who runs a small restaurant in the same Kurdish neighborhood of Istanbul, says that the HDP was more interested in serving the PKK than the people who elected it to power. It's already obvious where they're taking orders. It doesn't represent me. I, as a Kurd and Arab, opened a restaurant in the oldest and most historical location in Turkey. The government doesn't impose any restrictions on me. So, I don't accept that the HDP represents me. There's a divide in Turkey's Kurdish community over the HDP, whether it's ultimately responsible for its own demise, and conversely, whether the government has deliberately sought to dismantle a party that still remains third largest in parliament, and one which stands in opposition to a constitutional reform proposal set to be put to a referendum next month. What is clear is that the HDP has lost support among Kurds as the PKK has stepped up its attacks. Now, the HDP survival may depend on peace talks and the PKK laying down arms once and for all. And while this sensitive topic is discussed in hushed tones among Kurds, many wonder if this is the end of the HDP. Will they again have a party of their own? Randolph Nogel, The Newsmakers in Istanbul.